Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, DX9 kicks into the new year with their masterpiece scaled Moto Master. New Age Toys reveals their color prototype Legends scaled Prowl, and Soundwave and Optimus Prime are getting the G1 reissue treatment. Today is Wednesday, January 9th, 2019, and this is episode 311 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that is experimenting with a new choose-your-own-adventure format. If you don't want any Russian Yoshi, go directly to the end. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Yusuf, better known as Yoshi. Yo! Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Back by popular demand. And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hey, what's happening? Let's talk Transformers. I think it has taken us five years, and Jeremy finally has a tagline for the intro of the show. (laughs) (laughs) I've already forgotten it. I think that's a reference to last week's episodes. It is, which I listened to. Proof that Jeremy listened to the episodes. I listen when I'm not on. He wants to hear how many times he's referenced. Well, I I hope you enjoyed the references you got last week. I did. Good. Yes, so Jeremy is not fired. He's un- he's been unfired. I don't. Yeah, I don't. You guys realize you'd have to do all the website stuff. Yeah, yeah I, don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't know how we fire Jeremy because he has the, all the passwords, to everything, <laughs> yeah. and everything's in his name. So that that'd be a little tough. Anyway, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, Festivus, happy Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday, Ramadan. Diwali, <laughs> maybe? I don't know. It's lots of holidays. Mm-hmm. Solstice. Uh, we're back. It's a new year and a new dawn. But there's more Transformers to talk about. So looks like 2019 is gonna gonna have a few more Transformer stuff coming down the pike. Uh, we've got the War for Cybertron Siege going strong. Seems like the lots of people are happy with those coming out. Uh, they're hitting stores. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you got your black light. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's there, there's now a shortage on black lights. So, but we are here to uh, to bring you more Transformers audio goodness. So, as always, we'll start off with donations, and the the new year's starting off right when we've got uh, two new donations this month. Uh, thank you to John, and special thank you to longtime friend of the show, Marion. She took the plunge and is now a, an official Transmissions Donatrion. Thank you No very offense much. to John. No. We, th- we love you too. <laughs> Marion been helping out for a while because she uh, used to do the, uh, the transcripts for the interviews that we did. So she, yeah. Yeah, she, she really, she uh, been helping out with us for a while. And then she was like, why am I going to do this? I'm going to start my own podcast. Yeah. <laughs> These fools can talk to people, then surely I can. Yeah, so definitely go check out Podcast Maximus. Uh, it's mostly a Transformers comics focused uh, podcast. So she does that with uh, two other guys, uh, Stuart and I can't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> the other guy's name. But they have, have fun. One job, Charles. Let's to remember things. <laughs> My one job is to remember everything, right? It's not difficult. <laughs> But yeah, so we'll have a link to Podcast Maximus in the show notes, so you guys can check that out if you're if you're not already listening. But they do a, a really fun show. Going, they go a little bit deeper into the comic stuff too. So, I think John probably does some cool shit too. He just doesn't brag about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marion doesn't brag about it either. But we know we know about what Marion does. I want to know are... more about John. Shoot me an email, John. Tell me about what you do, <laughs> and thank you for all your money. I'll spend it soon. We don't let him touch the money, John. It's okay. All right. Uh, we've also still got the uh, the merchandise store. So uh, if you are looking for Transmissions merch, check out our Tee Public store at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. No sales at the moment, but they're, they're all the prices are pretty reasonable even without the sales. So if you're interested in a new shirt, check them out. All right. Uh, let's uh, start off this new year with some new toys news. 
All right. And first up this year is the DX9 Attila Combiner. This is their D14 Capone. It is their Masterpiece Scale G1 Motor Master figure. And this one I wanted to talk about because I don't know whether we've mentioned it much, but this is a Masterpiece Scaled uh, Menasaur that's going to be a lot different than some of the other Menasaurs that have been done. Uh, this one here is basically all the Menasaur bits are in this figure, in the Motor Master figure. So uh, it's going for a animation style and it's going for like really accurate to that, uh, to that cartoon. And with regards to the other Stunicons, they're simply just kind of clip on additions to the giant robot form that uh, this motor master figure kind of turns into. So if you can see with the pictures here, the motor master, you know, character is, is a much smaller figure. He looks like he's probably just built out of the front cab of the truck, maybe a little bit more, but there's not a lot going into that. Um, but you take the rest of the trailer and that's the main component of this um, uh, motor master figure. It's uh, really, or sorry, the, uh, the Menasaur figure. It's, uh, it really is an interesting take on it. So once you, if you were to get this figure, you really do have the, almost the entirety of this Menasaur. You just got to get the, uh, the rest of the stunning cons just to kind of clip onto the arms and the back of the legs, which is how the, 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 uh, the original animation kind of went. Um, it's an interesting take on it. So all the joints are already done. It's, it's all there. You just got to get the other bits for just, you know, aesthetics, really. Jeremy, take a look at this and let me know what your thoughts are on it. It's, it's a different kind of take on it. If you wanted to, you really don't need the other four, but it kind of missing quite a bit if you don't get them. But the whole robot is there. Yeah, I always thought Minasaur looked kind of silly on the cartoon where it just was like the cars were just sitting there. You know, whereas like with Devastator, you can see that the other, um, like all the component bots are transformed into his pieces. Mm -hmm. And, and Minasaur was just kind of like, you know, armed, his, like cars just sticking on his arms, sticking on his legs. Yeah. I think that's this is a neat take that we haven't seen, and I, I like it. I'm impressed with just how big a figure they can get out of that trailer. I mean, I'm guessing the trailer is not hollow at all. No. It's just everything is hidden in there. But, I mean, that's a pretty big trailer. I'm also thinking, that, well, I guess it's not all cut off, but it's just a really big combined figure. Yes. But I, I think, you know, it's something unique that we haven't seen before, like this take on it. and. From the animation model, it looks great. The the head matches to the cartoon, and you know I, I think there's a market for this. Uh, Yoshi, this is uh, G1, G1 animated. What are your thoughts on a combiner that goes straight for the animation model here? Uh, I don't have anything wrong with that. I think we all love DX9. Uh, I think as a result, we're inclined to like this. However, I feel like even though I'm interested in this and I like this, this is the sum of everything we hate. We don't like parts forming, and that's what a lot of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. this, this would fly for me a lot better if it wasn't Masterpiece scaled, if it was their small scale that they're, they got popular for. Sure. I, I would have way more acceptance of this because that could easily fall in the category of, like, how else are you going to transform something that small? Of course it's parts forming. And it looks like the cartoon. It's fucking cool. But here they went masterpiece scale with it. So I I feel like we're giving them a lot of a lot of slide, myself included, because we just like DX9. Okay. Uh, Charles, what are your thoughts on this guy here? This is, this is an interesting take, although what always bugged me about Motor Master was how... The original G1 character, when he was in robot mode, he was apparently composed of the entire truck and trailer. So mm -hmm. in robot mode, the 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 um the truck was just his feet. 
But mm-hmm. he was when he was in robot mode, he's the same size as Optimus Prime, where Optimus Prime's whole robot was just the the truck. Mm-hmm. Here, they've kind of to to achieve the masterpiece scale, they've kind of done a little cheat here, where the Motor Master robot is just the truck now, and then the whole the with the whole Menasaur figure being all the bits in the trailer. So it's a, yeah, like Yoshi, I'm not a fan of the parts forming. Um, the figure looks, I mean, the Motor Master, I mean, the Menasaur figure does look very, like, on model with the animation model uh, once the cars get stuck on there. But, I, I mean, in general, I'm not really a, like, I, I'm I'm not a big fan of the Stunicons uh, right. in general. So this is not really for me, but, um, but I, yeah, I would, I would be more interested in someone trying to attempt to do a Motor Master where he is like like he he does at, without cheating like he is actually composed of just the the truck and the and the trailer and somehow you know I don't I don't know I mean I mean yeah, I guess you'd need some kind of magic to get that to be also <laughs> masterpiece scale like, right. in scale with Optimus Prime but um but I, I that's what I cuz when we when we looked at the prototypes for this that's what I originally thought they were trying to do cuz originally they didn't show us that the the trailer was was the Menasaur piece. They just showed us the, the robot mode and the, and the trailer and the truck in the trailer and didn't show where the, how it was transforming. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, for me, I, I, I imagine this is probably the closest you can get, but I, I'd still like to see someone attempt to do, (laughs) to do the, the impossible, I guess. Sure. I will say there's one big problem. I just noticed with this. What's that? If you look at the uh, picture from the back. Yes. It is just hollow, and there's nothing covering that big hole in the back. Mm. Mm. The, That's a big strike against The them. only thing that I can imagine is that that there is where the actual cab would be. Oh, the Motor Master cab? Yeah. Mm. Is, is it, hopefully. This whole robot portion, like the, the Menasaur portion, is simply just the trailer, which yeah. is insane that they get all of that without including the cab. Yeah, so it, if the cab goes in there, that's a that's fine. It's just without it, I'm just like, you're looking at basically just a big, you know, um, pretender shell. Yeah, it's an empty crevice. My opinions on this are very similar to your guys. I really do think that it does the the Menasaur does you know look like the animation model, and that's what they're going for, and it looks good. My opinion on the animation model uh, was not great. I never liked the way it looked. It, it did it did kind of feel like the cars were just you know like just kind of slapped on the side of this giant robot. Also with, with regards to the legs, I hated how the, the cars were just stuck on the backs of this guy's shins. You know, it's, you almost would forget that his legs were supposed to be made of cars. Right. So I, I would hate that, you know, that, that aspect, you, you would lose that, that color palette from each individual car if you looked at them straight on so with this guy you're just going to slap these cars on it on the back and you could you'll miss them in the uh, in the front side i was looking for some some comparison picks because i there's been a lot of menasaurs recently from third-party companies and one of them is a, a direct comparison to mp10 where they're the same size in truck mode and i i can't find one for this guy so i don't think it's this one there is that out there. So it's, I think they're going for that masterpiece scale for the truck mode as well. But the, the, the motor master figure, I don't think is going to be close to that size. Um, I think he's, he looks much smaller, but all in all, I think it's a fine figure. It's not the kind of Menasaur that I like. Um, it's, it's cool. I think it looks pretty neat. The, uh, the aesthetics of the animation are just, uh, too many things that I didn't like about the animation to uh, to kind of make me want to buy it. But uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of neat. It's coming out. We'll take a look at it again once we get all the actual cars uh, stapled to it. I do have one more piece, and we can just kind of talk about it here for a bit. And uh, this here is uh, something I, I kind of want to get Jeremy's opinion on, because this is Fans Hobbies Master Builder Jr., they're MBJ-01. It's Armada Optimus Prime, and it's first renders of that. So it's not a lot of detail. We're getting a silhouette, basically, of a CG render. But this is, uh, from what I can tell, it looks like Bendy Prime. 
So it looks like there's the big Armada Prime in the background, but uh, uh, from what I can tell, it looks like Bendy Prime is in the front, in the foregrounds. Yeah, I'm not sure if those are all the, the same figure or if the junior is just the one in the front. Yeah. It does look promising, though. Like you said, it does look like Bendy Prime. Yeah. They will probably be able to re-release this in multiple different color versions, just like Takara did. Oh, yeah. So, so something on here says about six inches for the Master Builder Jr. Would that be about right for, well, the... That'd be a little bit bigger than Bendy Prime. Well, they've got to change it a little bit. But the it's definitely too small for the for the big one. Yeah, this does say um, that's the main core robot, so it does combine. But if they're able to pull off the posability and stuff of this core robot before it's combined, you know, that'd be something interesting. Yeah, if this does end up being you know a, a third party version of Bendy Prime, would you pick one of these up at least? If I could get just that that piece, and sure, I, I have no interest in the larger. Armada Optimus Prime. Yeah, that thing is weird. But if it's just Bendy Prime, yeah, I'd be interested. I mean, I, I would like to see one done with modern engineering. I mean, it was fantastic for 2004, mm -hmm. but, you know, we've come a long way with joints and everything, and I, I would love to see a modern take on it. Charles, Bendy Prime, maybe. Uh, interested? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I I was not into Armada. I I do I don't have ben, a Bendy Prime. I hear it is good. I know Jeremy has a, <sighs> has a bunch. <laughs> or you had you had a bunch and you sold a couple. No, I, I'm pretty sure I have all of them. Oh, okay, or almost all of them. Well, good. <laughs> Enjoy them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I figure. I mean, but I, I I figure this guy's like the the official one is still like you could probably still pick this up, right? I mean, I wonder if people would want a new take on Bendy Prime or would just go get a, an original Bendy Prime. Well, like Jeremy said, there's probably some newer engineering that is can yeah. can you know, and the plastic quality might be a little bit better. So mm -hmm. yeah, and for some for a lot of people, the the draw is the bigger figure. Mm -hmm. Like the combined, you know, what was, it, what was it, Galaxy Prime or whatever they called them. Mm -hmm. But that just never interested me. I'll, I'll be curious to see how the final figure looks. But yeah, for me, I'm, I'm not into collecting the Armada, the Unicron trilogy guys, I guess. All right. Yoshi, it's an Optimus Prime. It's not G1. It's, uh, it's Jeremy's favorite. What do you think? I don't. I don't feel like you should feel necessary to throw to me. <laughs> yeah, you, you're doing it out of the politeness of your own heart, dude. Just spare everybody and move on. All right then. Well, uh, I will add one more thing. If this is in fact going to be Armada Prime, and the silhouette of the larger figure in the back does uh, come to pass, um, I wonder if they will also do like an overload. Uh, load and uh, what is it? Uh, Armada Jetfire were also figures that uh, combined with that to form like it was a huge figure. Um, I believe I have most of it, too. So uh, it turns into one of the biggest Optimus Prime figures that you can get. It's just it's 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 beautiful in its insanity of the amount of stuff that you can combine to the, into this guy. So if you make one, I think you got to make them all. But uh You'd have a hard time selling the jet fire and the overload uh, by themselves. So it is it is interesting seeing the third parties move on to some of these other series because I mean, we haven't had too many Armada third party figures. No, you're right, and it's almost it's it's like confirmation that uh, that the G1 is done. They're done with G1 for now, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's all I brought to the table this week. Uh, Jeremy, what's uh, what's your figure or What's your toy news of 2019? Well, I got a uh, Christmas present uh, via a Hasbro press release. Oh. Uh, on Christmas Day, they... New toys? Uh, no. Oh. They won a court case in China oh. protecting their intellectual property right. And uh, apparently it was like um, all about manufacturing and distributing counterfeit products. When this came out, a lot of people on like Facebook and stuff were all freaking out, saying this is the end of third party stuff, and this has nothing to do with third party. From my understanding of this, 
it's more to do with like knockoffs and people selling things with, you know, you know, as Hasbro products, specifically Transformers, and it's not from Hasbro. So I just thought we'd bring this up because I tend to bring up these type of things, but it third party is not going away because of this because they are very careful about not including any Autobot Decepticon logos, anything like that. And that's what would really get them attacked by the lawyers right away. Mm-hmm. So, You guys have any comments on this? <clears throat> Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, you'll see in, in, a, in a section coming up soon that it definitely has not deterred people uh, from releasing new KO information. Well, yeah, it's, I think dealing with things like this in China, it's, it's probably a losing battle. There, there's just, there's so many people that like work at these factories that will just do a, a quick a run for themselves or something. And that's where a lot of these KOs come from. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you have a clear win, you go for it and get it. Uh, but I guess we'll move on. Uh, I have one more story. This um, came out December 30th. Top toy in um, where is this? in the, in Nordic countries. So I guess Norway, Sweden, things like that. They are going into uh, bankruptcy. And th- they had the Toys R Us license for that region. So, you know, they were... Not the Toys R Us company, but they were licensed, so they had Toys R Us stores that they ran. So this is just continuing the the slow downfall of Toys R Us everywhere but Canada. And hopefully there are other alternatives in that region, you know, to get toys. It seems like they're a pretty pretty big toy company. So I just just wanted to bring the, the sad news at the beginning of the year. Well that sucks for them. Yeah. Not everyone can be Canada. No, that's true. So um, I guess if I know we have some listeners in that area of the world, if you know, give us your thoughts and you know, send us some feedback if this affected you. So that pretty much everything I brought this week. Uh, Yoshi, what do you got? Well, I have some more G1 reissue news. Um, we've got an early look at what the re-release for a G1 Optimus Prime is going to be packaged as. The most notably, the uh, the trailer is not included, and we've got a price point set at about fifty bucks for this guy. What I'm seeing jump out at me at this particular image is that uh, the image of uh, how to transform Optimus Prime on the top of the box shows him with short smokestacks. But looking at the figure, it doesn't look like they've actually cut them off. What do you think of this, Daryl? Are we going to get rubber tires? Is this thing going to be uh, a hot commodity? Um, the Optimus Prime, definitely. Definitely uh, rubber tires. This will fly off the shelves, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no no doubt about it. Even priced at 50 bucks, I think, is a little high, but it's Optimus Prime. There's a Optimus Prime tax. Right. Charles, will you be getting all of your kids one? No, okay. none of my kids. <laughs> oh, no! I mean, I it, uh, no trailer, no deal, and fifty dollars? No, no thanks. Okay, I, I I hear a little sadness in your voice, and I want to give you a hug. <laughs> Jeremy, will Alexander have one? Uh, not one of these, but uh-huh. I think I have enough that he will eventually have a G1 Prime. So do we? Do you think, uh, I, I got to throw this back at you, Daryl, because I'm going to go a little deeper here, but do you think this is going to have any die cast on it or is it going to be plastic like everything else we've gotten so far that's been a I think it's going to be a full-on re- remake uh, with, uh, with die cast and everything. Yeah, it's, uh, they're definitely, um, they're, they're keeping the, uh, the reissues as, uh, as, faithful as they possibly can obviously this one's not uh coming with a trailer and and that's fine i guess as far as everything else i didn't pick up the star scream from whatever but everything i heard of it it did come with diecast so yeah as uh i don't the, expect the hot rod didn't but no the toe but the original one had a had a version with uh with no toe or oh. the plastic toes as well so um yeah anything that uh that came as die cast originally should should probably come as die cast again if you look at the paint on the cab in the box you can see that front section that is die cast 
is slightly different color. So pretty sure Daryl's right. So uh, when I every week when I go into my comic book store, I get asked. I literally get asked, "What's the what's the next you know reissue that they're going to have?" What's the, and everybody wants to know when I when I walk into the store. I'm going to have a very hard time, Daryl, not recommending a KO online. Uh, it seems for less money you can get the full smokestacks, the trailer, the whole the whole spiel. Like, can you think of a good reason why we shouldn't be recommending that to people? A KO? Just... Yeah. I mean... I have bought two or three KOs in my life. Yeah. Um, and I've been happy with every single fucking one of them. Well, I mean... <clears throat> I don't know. It's... Uh, I mean, if you want the... Uh, if you want the trailer, go down to, uh, like, a... You can find them um, all over the place. Uh, I would I would look for uh, like a, a used toy store or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. I know that the toy store that I volunteer at does have a number of trailers just waiting for decent Optimus Primes to come in to get added to. So um, these the the trailers were a large toy, right? So they they generally made it through childhood. If you've got people who who won't buy it, um, Yoshi, because of the lack of trailer that's uh you know i don't think that's going to stop a, a, the majority of people okay I, I you know i just when i when i think about the fact that my own kid is getting into this kind of thing like i i couldn't in good conscience just give him the cap and be like here you know what what, what will they know what what difference will they well, know well okay i'm a, i'm a bad example in that is that i have you know my g1 on display so they know what's supposed to be in it right uh, see but, that's the thing is I if the kid goes into person. the store and they see it yeah. and they see optimus prime cool can i get it sure i'm sorry uh you know i don't want to buy that for you because it's missing something what do you mean it's missing something it looks great it's all right there the box hasn't been opened yeah but originally back in 1984 it came with a trailer what do you mean it's right there i don't have there's no trailer i don't see a trailer yeah but in 1984 it had a trailer well mm. i don't want it doesn't have a trailer now so buy it. Okay. I don't know. No, it's, it doesn't, point. Point. It, it means it doesn't make any difference to me. And then the, the kid who wants it, it, it won't make any difference to them either. They shouldn't, the majority of kids won't know the difference. Okay. All right. So the, uh, the next reissue we've been, uh, we've been alluded to is going to be uh sound wave. Uh, and it's going to come with buzzsaw. And, uh, I'm probably more excited about this guy. And I'm not noticing anything off about him in particular. What do you think, uh, uh, Jeremy? Will you be picking this one up? I might. This one, it looks like it doesn't have the double cassette door like a lot of the previous reissues did. Right. Which was off the Sound Blaster mold. So I'll have to check. I'm not sure if I have one that is the original single cassette chest. So that's really intriguing for me. How about, uh, how about you, Charles? Uh, Soundwave is a classic, so um, yeah, I, I could I could see I could see getting this for my kids. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, um, I'm like Daddy, what is that that goes into this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prehistoric uh, iPod, <laughs> or that that might even be a too too old reference. <laughs> I, I wonder oh. how much how much if this is going to be the same price point as the Optimus Prime. It's, it's about the same size figure. That's my question to Daryl. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know what the price is on this. Like, if you, you can see, it doesn't say, but I wouldn't, ha- I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually a little more expensive. Mm-hmm. Maybe ten bucks, but uh, I, I think this one looks really cool. I'm curious as well as to whether or not it's got the double cassette door, because that's an immediate no go for me. I don't have one with the double cassette door, but uh, I don't want one with it. It's it just looks terrible. But uh, this is this is pretty sweet. This would be another one like um, like the Star Scream that I would be concerned about people trying to sell as brand new. Um, obviously, the original Soundwave came in with a uh, styrofoam insert. This one obviously doesn't. Um, and uh, the buzzsaw was in a different place, but you take all of that stuff out and you try and sell it loose as brand new or, or original. That this is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. As uh, you know, there's got to be some kind of stamp on there. It says says it's a uh, uh, a reissue. 
It'll have like a modern date on it or something. Uh, that's yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Um, I haven't seen the uh, 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 a Star Scream opened up, but uh, I'm looking for. I'd like to see if, if it does. These are cool. This is Soundwave is a, is a classic. Like Charles said, it's it's a it's a sweet figure. Transforms super easy, but it still gets from point A to point B and looks like what it's supposed to. It's it's beautiful. It's it's Transformers to a T. It's the way it's it's supposed to be. Agreed. Speaking of T's, if you like Soundwave, you can buy one. Very nice looking T shirt. Ah, uh, cassette man. Tape man. Tape man. Sure. Charles, you get to follow that up. I have another sound wave. <laughs> Maybe you might not think this one is a classic. Uh, this is a third party version of Revenge of the F- or not Revenge of the Fallen, uh, Dark of the Moon sound wave. Uh, so this is the from the movie line, uh, the sound wave that turned into a car from Dark of the Moon. Uh, he was voiced by Frank Welker. But I guess that's where the similarities end. Uh, This figure does also come with a movie version, Laserbeak and Ravage. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I was not a fan of the... I mean, I'm not a fan of the movie designs in general. So Ravage in particular, I hated the the single eye they they gave him in in Revenge of the Fallen. And that's what this figure is. Yeah, we've got like we've got the prototype pictures at, at a um, from a uh, I guess from a show, and we've got some renders. Uh, so, and this is a new. Is this a relatively new third party company? New Age. I don't remember New Age, but they're calling it the XM One Mista. They're new, but they they kind of stole the show at TFCon uh, Canada last year with their uh, super small ultra intricate bumblebee yeah uh, okay so uh so daryl what do, what do you think of this uh this uh movie verse sound wave so when i forced this on you this uh this topic <laughs> I, I bent your arm behind your back and said you will do this topic i thought that this was legend scale um, but then I look at it and I see that there is no actual legend scale in here. This is this is full, you know, a full figured robot. Um, yep. Masterpiece this, scaled, in fact. Yes. So this is a new <laughs> uh, new age uh, is doing is taking a, a new step uh, with their with this design, I believe. Um, so they're going into the, the masterpiece scale stuff with their movie designs. Um, not a huge fan of, of movie designs. Uh you know, at all, but, uh, this particular one turns into a AMG Mercedes, um, which is a gorgeous car. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, if you gotta, you know, have a movie figure turn into something, it might as well be a, a a beautiful luxury automobile. Um, so I, and, uh, so it, it, it it looks okay. It looks like a, a big, pile of knives like the Bayverse movies do all in all i think it's uh i think it's decent it's ginormous which is uh crazy but yeah it's uh it's neat we want to see some color on it um this is a figure that uh wasn't produced in the movie line uh in wide release uh you had to get lucky and order something from asia to get an actual deluxe class version of this uh, this figure um, and then there was one produced in the studio, or uh, the what is it called? The ones that came with the the figures. Um, I don't know. It was a little bit bigger. Human Alliance. That's it. The Human Alliance sphere, uh, series. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so there's only two official uh, releases of this mold, um, but they are all super hard to find. So for if there's somebody out there with a a movie line collection, this uh, this may be what they want. Also, the the fact that it's coming with a ravage and a laser beak that is kind of nice. Although I I wonder if that's going to to jack the price up a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I I find it funny that they they don't they they can't put a a Decepticon logo on it, but they have no problem putting the Mercedes Benz lo- <laughs> uh, logo on there. Yep. So I guess they're not worried about Mercedes coming after them, but they are worried about Hasbro. I guess, yeah. 
Uh, so Jeremy, uh, what do you think of this guy? Uh, the, the car mode looks fantastic. Uh, I really like the look of the car. The robot mode looks a little bit more bulky and chunky than what I would expect from a movie design. I, I can't remember exactly how he looked in the movie, but I'm pretty sure he he didn't look as kind of big and rounded as this. And for the most part, I thought the sports cars were more slim in robot mode. I agree on the Ravage and the one eye thing, but this seems like a, a pretty decent representation of, of what you see on screen. And the laser beak, I think, looks really good. I mean, it's the the way they make it. I don't know the way the way that like the neck looks and the the translucent things in the wings. I really like that. And it, it's a movie figure though, so I, I'm not really interested in buying it. But yeah, I, I can appreciate what they're going for there. All right, and Yoshi, this is an immediate purchase for you, right? Yep, I I just want the laser beak. <laughs> I'm my enthusiasm is. Uh, false at this point for this figure <laughs> so, uh, I, I, fake I news huh? fake news right it's just it's just not geared for me all right well uh i'm gonna move on to the figure i wanted to talk about <laughs> it's also from new age but this is more i think more up our alley this is legend scaled prow uh and uh this is called it's called N dash H three Harry, uh, and this looks like a really nice figure. So, I guess uh, as as you said, Daryl New Age uh, showed off a Bumblebee figure in the same uh, in the same design. So now they're 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 following that up with this Prowl, mm-hmm. and yeah, this I mean this looks very very detailed, very articulated, and it looks like a very nice transformation too. Mm-hmm. And the like, it looks good from the back and the front, which you usually can't say that about a lot of Transformers figures. And so, yeah, it's 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 nice. I like it. You can see the the Bumblebee in those two last picks. Yeah, but no, this one looks it looks really quite good. It's quite amazing that this is Legend scale. Mm-hmm. And the Optimus Prime in these pictures is the DX9 one, I believe. Uh, Dutch. Yeah, Dutch. Yep. Another and one. And he comes with the. Oh uh, yeah, and 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 the this prowl figure comes with his uh, his shoulder cannons and uh, and a rifle. Mm-hmm. So hang on to those accessories because I'm sure they're easily lost. Yeah, but it's nice to have those included. How much was the uh, was the Bumblebee figure at at TFCon? Do you remember? Well, I saw it in in uh, Chicago as well, and I almost bought it, but it was uh, I think it was like thirty five dollars or something like that. 40 okay. bucks maybe on the high end it was a lot cheaper in in canada because it had just been released and uh the hype was just kind of getting started on it it's legit like these uh these new age figures these legends class ones are, are really quite good and the the prowl here definitely looks like it's cut from the same cloth yoshi is this more your speed it absolutely is I, you know he's absolutely adorable he really is i don't i don't know what to tell you <laughs> Sign me up. I'll take a look at these things. All right. And uh, Jeremy, is this a, a purchase for you? Uh, I mean, if the price is right. Uh, this looks pretty good. I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm more of, I think, Iron Factory and DX9 because we know what we get from them. Mm-hmm. But I'm not seeing anything that would prevent an impulse purchase. I mean, if you want a G1 Prowl, like a little tiny one, this looks just as good as the others. Yep, and very much like taking the uh, the original alt mode, like the that original mm-hmm. um, Datsun Datsun uh, car mold, not a, not an updated. Uh, like I I remember, didn't uh, DX9 or Iron Factory do like a Cybertronian mode uh, um, Datsun Brothers that with different? Uh, yeah, uh, I believe I think it was DX9's first one. The first one they did, they just did the Dotson brothers. They mm-hmm. did all three of them. But this is very much like the the original Dotson uh, car mode there. So. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, that's my toy topic. So uh, despite uh, 
Hasbro's best efforts, we've still got KO Corner. So let's go there now. All right, so we are back in KO Corner. It's been a while. I still, I got to clean this place out. It's really, I've been packing some crap in here. Um, so first, the only thing in here this week is something that uh, got brought to us in our Discord chat. Um, remember, you can be a part of our Discord channel. You don't have to be a Patreon to do it. You can just kind of join. It's fun. It's, you know, everyone just chatting, talking about stuff. And uh, this one was brought to us by Pearton, and it was done today. Um, so thank you, Pearton, for uh, for dropping this one on us. And uh, this is Jinbao, uh, a nice uh, company that's known for doing oversized combiner figures, uh, knockoffs, are doing a knockoff of MP44 Convoy. Uh, this is insane how fast this is happening. Uh, so MP44 is the new version 3 of MP Optimus Prime, and they have some uh, an ad coming out already showing that they are doing a knockoff for it. Their ad is talking about how much they're going to charge for it. It's going to be approximately 205 US dollars before shipping, and uh, they are starting to take pre-orders on this thing, which is crazy. Take this as a grain of salt. Personally, um, I'd start watching the, uh, the the pre-orders and see what happens with that because of the uh, the um, the trademark and copyright stuff that Jeremy talked about earlier. If all of this goes to shit and they can't ship out anything that you just pre-ordered, uh, you may lose some cash. So, uh, you know, be careful out there buying your KOs. Um, because Hasbro doesn't want you buying these. Just be careful. But it's way cheaper than the original. So I'm curious how, like, is is someone at the 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 Hasbro Takara factory just, like, taking a bunch of designs or prototypes or even just taking final, like, assembly line figures and boxing them up and just, like, disappearing them? Or, and... Oh, obviously. Have to be. I mean, they yeah. could be ones that didn't pass QC for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, but it's kind of brazen. I mean, the 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 graphic they have, they still use the Takara Tomy logo there. It's like mm -hmm. wow. Yep, there's Pretty no out in the open date on any of this. It's not saying when it'll be uh, ready to go, but uh, they are definitely trying to capitalize on the on the the people that are are saying that the Takara price is way too high. So yeah. I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of worrisome, just because of the news that Jeremy brought to us earlier about the them kind of cracking down on KOs. So, um, I would just be worried about uh, you know, sp paying somebody my two hundred and five dollars and uh, never receiving anything. What kind of recourse do you have? You have none. So, I would be quite upset. But uh, anyway. Uh, does anyone have any comments on that? No? Cool. All right. That's it for KO Corner. Uh, back to you, Charles. Well, back to you, Daryl, for Rapid Fire Toys. Oh, yes. Absolutely, positively, definitely. Nobody can get the job done faster than I can. Nobody, nobody, nobody. So, uh, Rapid Fire Toys for this week, we have a Toy Hacks update for December. Uh, yes, December's over, but uh, we were off and... This update came in anyway, so we're bringing it to you. It's not a huge update, but it's some cool shit anyway. So for uh, December 2018, Toy Hacks is bringing us some really sweet-ass labels for your Siege, Optimus Prime, and Megatron. One of the cool things about the Optimus Prime is it's coming with new smokestacks. So if you're not super thrilled about the smokestacks that came with the Siege Optimus Prime, swap them out. You got some smokestacks to come with the uh, Optimus Prime stickers from uh, Toy Hacks. Uh, also, the Megatron set uh, from Toy Hacks is also two different sets. You can you have your choice. You can either do a G1 inspired uh, Megatron set or go nuts and do the IDW set and uh, base your design off of the recent comics. 
Next up, we have one set for the Power of the Primes line, and it is the Amazon exclusive Throne of the Primes Optimus or Optimal Optimus. That's the big ass one that came in the box uh, that has the really cool window. If I had bought it, I probably wouldn't open it because the box looks so cool. But uh, if you wanted to open it, uh, you can get some really kick ass stickers for it here. Make it look really nice. Uh, next up, we got some Takara figures. Takara. Um, this is their LG Mirage figure. Um, it's, uh, it's just specifically for this Mirage figure and, uh, it, uh, it makes it look, uh, you know, kind of nice. Uh, it just adds a nice little bit of detail to it. Uh, and also they have this nice set for Grand Maximus. This is the Takara, re uh, repaint of Titan. Uh, Titan War or Re yeah, Titan's Return Fortress Maximus, and uh, this is the uh, sticker set for that Grand Maximus figure. So a uh, Takara exclusive figure. And lastly, third party, we've got Fans Toys Dracula and Zeta Toys Armageddon. And the Armageddon figure is the entire combiner for. Uh, Zeta Toys' uh, Bruticus figure, and that's a big, big set. So if you're looking to do that, uh, there's some new stickers for you there. Um, but that's it for Rapid Fire Toys and the, the Toy Hacks December 2018 update. All right, so uh, that'll do it for toys. Let's move on to some trips to the store. This is where we show off all the awesome Transformer stuff we got this week. We do this as a video that you can see on YouTube. So you can see everything we got in beautiful high definition. Uh, but we also will put the audio right here in the show so you can keep listening and enjoy our loving descriptions. But pop over to that video. Seeing is believing, right? So without further ado, trips to the store. So uh, let's get into some of the stuff we got. Maybe we have some Christmas stuff. Oh, Maybe not. <laughs> Charles is going to kick all our asses again. He, uh, he does it. He does it once a year. <laughs> all right, uh, Jeremy, start us off. What do you got? Uh, all right, um, I have a couple comics I picked up um, after the holidays. I have the Bumblebee, which is the Go for the Gold. Which, um, after reading uh, Sel and Charles this in our chat, this is actually, uh, it comes before the previous Bumblebee graphic novel that came out. Uh, I can't remember which one that, like the You Can Win If, win you, if dare. you Dare. Yeah. Yeah, Win If You Dare. That's a sequel to this. If they came out out of order. That's, you know, that's a big surprise for Diamond and IDW. And then I have <laughs> GoBots number two. Completely Transformers related, Yoshi. <clears throat> oh. And then uh, my kid, uh, through my wife, got me the Bumblebee movie, Titans Return, Soundwave, and Doombox. I already have the Titans Return, Soundwave, so I'm probably going to leave this in box for a while. But it, it, it looks more 80s Boombox-like. I like the packaging where the handle comes out. And then I'm not going to go through all of these, but I got a bunch of bot bots and yeah, they're, they're fun. I'm probably not going to get too many more. I, I want to get the donut, but that's about it. I don't know. They're okay. What, what are their names? <coughs> I have no idea because I don't have any of the packaging up here. That's soft drink. Yeah. <laughs> Master shake. Th this How is, dare you? This is this is um, five guys drink. That's what their cups the cups look like. I got the little dinosaur guy. I, I can see for the target market, they'll probably like it. All right, Yoshi, you're up next. Uh, I have the Metals Diecast Optimus Prime non-transforming transformer. 
Oh, mm-hmm. So the Walmart reissue. <laughs> yeah, there you go. With the uh, corny... Oh, it's not on there. Uh, yeah, it's right there. The corny underside to make you at least feel like you can... You know, at least he's got smokestacks. That's okay for some reason. I don't know why I haven't opened him, but that's it. Box art's good. It's very good. All right, Daryl, what do you got? Well, uh, what do I got this year? Or this... <laughs> it's the whole year. Um... Uh, I too, uh, well, I showed off the packaging that I was, that I was doing. I, I gave my daughter some bot bots, so I figured I'd show them, um, just to show everyone that I, what I got or what she got in the uh, blind packs. So she got doubles, which I was looking at the codes and they were different. All five of them were different. So she shouldn't have got doubles, but she did. She got two Sergeant scrub dubs the bar of soap guy. So... I got two of those, or she's got two of those. She's got Sippy Slurps. <laughs> are these the official names? They are the official names. I <laughs> did my research, Jeremy. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, she's got uh, Coca Crazy. It's a uh, hot cocoa. And lastly, she's got, probably goes with your drink cup there, Jeremy. Spud muffin. Spud muffin. Yeah. Some french fries. Yeah. So eh, they're fun. She had some fun with them. Um, I They are kind of like sized right to go in the, uh, like the, the hands of some masterpiece figures or bigger, you know, yeah, some that's oversized what I want the, stuff. That's why I want the, uh, the donut. You know, they could work. I figure the donut would look great with masterpiece prowl. Yeah. Yep, it definitely fits in. There's been a lot of people have been putting it in the mouth of Grimlock. So. Yeah. <clears throat> I, too, got uh, the same comics that Jeremy got. So this Bumblebee one uh, right there. So got that. And then I did pick up the GoBots one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. You're you're committed. Got to buy them all now, Daryl. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I received a really nice Christmas card from IDW. <laughs> I didn't bring mine up. Yeah. I sent mine back. <laughs> so uh, from uh, it's a Winona Earp Christmas card. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of signatures in it. There is no Tom Belong signature. Tom Belong, where is your signature, <laughs> Tom Belong? <clears throat> yeah, there's some some definitely some signatures on here. Uh, thank you for sending this out. Tom Belong. I know that you're responsible, Tom Belong. <laughs> but uh, I would have liked your signature on it, Tom Belong. And I got Christmas cards from the rest of you lot. Thank you very much. I'm an asshole because I don't send out Christmas cards. <laughs> <laughs> so, or does your wife send them out? Because that's how it works around here. She does, but since I'm a jerk <clears throat> and don't give out any anybody's else's addresses. When the first one... That doesn't make any sense. If we've all sent you postcards for multiple years, your wife has got the return address on them. Yeah. I get the mail first, though. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) He crumples up the address, throws it in the trash before she sees it. (laughs) Cards, pictures, I love it. Maybe uh, you could, when you get the card, you could make a spreadsheet and put the addresses in, you know, just right then, and you don't have to remember later. Or have a Google Doc that already has them in it. Um, <laughs> I also got uh, a package um, on, what is today? I got a Friday, actually. Like, um, And this has been uh, coming for some time. Um, back in July, I, uh, I gave Nick Roach a sketch cover to do at TFCon. And uh, he uh, wasn't able to finish it at the convention. So I said, take it back. To uh, actually, no, prior to TFCon, I sent it to him in Ireland to fit to do, and he said he would bring it to TFCon. Well, he forgot it in Ireland and said he would just send it to me when it gets when he gets back. Never did, forgot it. That's fine. I'm not in a rush. In 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 Nick's defense, he had like ninety percent of his shit stolen from him. That's true. If, Toronto was a shit convention for nick so i have i was not in a being selfish and saying i want my sketch cover 
So I didn't do that. But um, I just said, hey, when you get a chance, send it to me. No big rush. He got busy. Uh, you know, rec room of the wreckers, all that stuff. It all happened, you know, whatnot. But he finally sent it to me. Um, it is absolutely amazing. Pun intended. Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's just, it's so sweet. Uh, Nick did a, a fantastic job on it. It's, it's glorious. It's, it's really good. Uh, I had to get him to do a Spider-Man cover because he did those issues of, uh, Amazing Spider-Man Re Renew Your Vows, issues 13 to 15. So I had to get him to do that. And, uh, really it's, it's, it's great. He did a, he did a great job. Uh, it's like a once in a lifetime chance. Really? You know. So what did you have done on the back? Nothing. I don't get stuff done on the back. It doesn't get seen, Yoshi. So I don't get stuff on the back. But uh, he also sent me other stuff in the in the uh, in the envelope. I didn't. Uh, he's just a great guy. He sent me uh, he sent me Lost Light twenty five that he sent. He had he signed for me. Nice. Obviously, his cover. Um, and then he sent me. Uh, he sent me some prints as well. So he sent me the Spider-Man print, which I thought is just, it's amazing. I love this thing. Uh, him and the, the Spider-Bot there. It's uh, its pretty awesome. Um, and then that's his, uh, his Renew Your Vows uh, characters there. Um, and then he sent the, uh, the two Lost Light prints that he did. So one's with the... Uh, the the bad good guys and then the good good guys so yeah these are great these are really great and lastly uh the, the really the really awesome one this is just fantastic uh this is uh the last stand of the records print awesome yeah that's beautiful so thank you very much nick um Oh, there's one more. I forgot about this one. This is the uh, this is the um, the 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 Verity Carlo uh, through the years print. Nice. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. I, um, one of the only good human characters in Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Nick Nick really went above and beyond. Um, he's he's great. Log on. He's still selling these prints. Log on to his uh, his store and 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 buy them up. And he packages the stuff super well. Like, like I expected this thing to arrive, you know, just in the in the box that I send it in. But uh, I get this big freaking envelope, and I'm like, oh shit, this thing is gonna be ruined. And it's all just like secured, and and these prints, like all the corners on them are still like perfect. And uh, he really did a good job. Like Nick knows how to how to send this stuff. You think he worked for like you know, UPS or some shit like that. But, uh, no, he did a good job. Buy his stuff. Anyway, I'm done. You're up, Charles. Wow. No, no toys. No toys. <laughs> nope. My daughter's toys. I, I didn't get anything, though. People don't buy me toys for Christmas. All right, it's Trisha's <laughs> corner now. That's right. What did she get you? What are you going to make us look like asses for again? Well, <laughs> all right. Well, I'll start off. Uh, well, first of all, I picked up a new transmission shirt. So check the rub sign. It's legit. It's nice. I want to rub your chest. I want to touch it. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is our, our new trans, is a transmissions hoodie with the rub sign design that Jeremy did. Is it nice and comfortable? Uh, it is very comfortable, and I, I took advantage of all the sales that T Public had before Christmas, so I got it at a discount. So you did that, Jeremy? Yeah. Hasbro know about this? <laughs> <laughs> they do now. Yeah, they do now. <laughs> I fail to see how a corner of something, like just making a particular <clears throat> shape. You failing to understand doesn't matter to the legal team. <laughs> you can fail well, all you want. 
Well, you might these might be limited edition then, so get them, so get them while you can. So, but if you want to go, if you want a shirt like this, transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. It's right there. So yeah, those new headphones. Um, they are new headphones. Uh, so these are Plantronics Backbeat Pro Two. Ooh, I was gonna special say, edition. Your ears look shinier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Very nice Bluetooth headphones. Uh, so. I use them a lot for work and for travel, so they have a little bit of noise canceling. So uh, when I'm on the plane, so uh, I also picked up a comic. I did not get the Bumblebee one that's that's at my shop, but I did get GoBots number two. Uh, the Bumblebee one is uh, is being ordered, special ordered, since my shop didn't get any. Uh, but yeah, GoBots. Um. I also found more of the Siege Micromasters. So I got the Decepticon Airstrike Patrol. Uh, so this is, uh, I think this is Storm Shad- Storm, what is it? Storm Cloud and and Viper. Vis- Whisper. Visper, but it should be Whisper. So Storm Cloud and Whisper. Micromasters. They turn into jets. They're, good. They're cool little figures. They also turn into the Armada Star Saber. Yes, they do. That's right. So, yeah, they're nice. Okay, so now you want to you want to see what the what Trisha got for me. Um, I, I'll preface this by saying I, I, I I'll just say right now you're going to be disappointed. I'm sorry. <laughs> so Trisha didn't didn't uh, uh, didn't come through with a a huge like specifically like super targeted gift, but she did find something Transformers related. But this is more of a, I would say, I would say it's more like a gag gift, <laughs> something just fun. Did you get the RC tits? <laughs> no. <laughs> I got squeaks. <laughs> so radio controlled squeaks. She probably got that. Yeah, it works too. about as well as I expected to. <laughs> well, it's not. Oh. All right, that's uh, that's it for trips to the store. All right, we're back from our trips to the store, and let's move on to some convention news. All right, uh, we have something interesting in convention news. If you'll remember, Hascon was announced for September six through eight this year, but right before Christmas, like literally December twenty third. Hasbro put out a press release that is being postponed. That is the time that you would put out a press release when you want people to not pay attention to it because they've already left for their holidays and stuff. And I'm kind of upset because I, I was, I was, I'd heard good things about the planning of this Hascon and was hoping to be able to go, but I think this is related to a, a story we mentioned in October where they're having, there's an investor lawsuit and there's a potential for layoffs. So obviously some extra expense like a convention like this would be one of the first things to go. So hopefully it comes back, but I'm not very optimistic. What do you guys think about this? Do you think it, it's coming back or do you think it's done? I mean, what what I really hate about this is that they took away BotCon to do their corporate thing, and then you know it's it's on the whim of their you know whatever happens to the company. I mean, that's the the point of BotCon was it was a, I mean it was always a fan run convention. Mm-hmm. We got some Hasbro licensed stuff, but you know it was really for the fans, and now they took away BotCon. Uh, and they're like, oh, we'll replace it with Hascon, and now you know Hascon is you know subject to the the whims of the you know whatever happens in the is in the ha- happening in the Hasbro Corporation. I mean, just let it, let us have Botcon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was there really anything disappoints me? Was there anything memorable that came out of Hascon the year before last that's that made it worth it? For anybody, um, I mean, well, Mike went, so he the exclusives would to, were pretty yeah. fucking awesome. They're still they're still selling for crazy money. 
Um, <clears throat> they, uh, they, I mean, they, they showed off a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, Flo Rida. I mean, the fact that it was it was corporate run meant they could get a lot of like cool guests and things. Yeah, I mean, they had Stan and, Lee. Like, they had, yeah, they had Stan Lee. They had Peter Cullen. They had Frank Welker, um, Frank Welker. signing for free. Uh, they had Chewbacca mom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, but the, you you got that at the expense of it's a corporate run show but, and you can't have any unofficial stuff there. Well, yeah, and I mean, the vendor room was apparently horrible because it was only official Hasbro product, nothing else. And mm-hmm. it seemed like they were trying to be all things to all fandoms, so it wasn't particularly good for any you know, if you were just a, a casual fan off the street, you probably had a better time than just a Transformers fan or just a My Little Pony fan wanting to go. Right. You know, if you were expecting what you would get from a BotCon, you didn't get that. Yep. So bring back BotCon. Hashca- hashtag bring back BotCon. Yeah. In a different, in a different you way. Guys, like, uh, from, I'm, I'm, I'm being selfish here. Like, the one thing that came out of that convention that I was interested in getting my hands on was the one magic card. Mm-hmm. Like, was there stuff in there that you guys were super stoked to try and get your hands on or wish you could have gotten your hands on? Well, I think we got, I mean, I got, the, I we got stuff thanks to Mike. We got, yeah. we yeah. got the RC. Got, we no, got, the, got the power brick. That, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, I got the magic cards and they're, they're pretty awesome. There's also a, a, a play mat that apparently had Grimlock on it that uh, is selling for insane money right now, too. So, <clears throat> you know, all that kind of stuff is, it's neat. They're, they're really like exclusive, you know, items that you can only get at that particular convention. I w- I'm, I'm kind of uh, disappointed because I was starting to kind of come up with a, a, a game plan to, to kind of, you know, uh, blitz the convention in one day, you know? Yeah, I mean, we had all talked about um, yeah, you know, I was getting, getting uh, <clears throat> yeah, getting some people, you know, that are even even some people that live in the area. If if all of us can't, you know, weren't weren't able to kind of get together. I mean, uh, I think Jeremy was was considering driving up here, and then we would kind of go together, maybe pick up uh, pick up uh, Evangelist on the way. Um, uh, Mystic Marvels would also join in and uh, get a, get a whole bunch of you know drivers to do the you know the driving because it's a long drive but uh get there if the convention is horrible the experience would have been fun of course we'd have a blast but uh basically that's the that would be in the idea was to kind of drive there uh you know in the morning real early get there blitz it one day leave Mm -hmm. at the end and get back you know no hotel yeah and, and stop for food when you need it and uh whatnot but basically you just hit the one the the one day and do it but um so i was kind of getting stoked to do that and it's kind of fun but it sucks that it's not happening all right well uh that is the only thing we have in convention news everything else will be in alt mode so all right well uh then let's finish up the show with some feedback So we got some feedback on episode 309 from Dual Mirror Grid Work, who was super excited to have won his uh, Toy Hacks $10 gift certificate. And uh, uh, he also wanted to let DJ Rona know he felt really bad and he's sorry and hang in there, buddy. Um, but uh, Mr. Grid Work, you, you need to contact Daryl at transmissionspodcast.com so that you can actually secure this uh, gift certificate. If you don't do that, you're not going to get it. And uh, we're going to have to give it to somebody that's not DJ Ronan. So please <laughs> write in. And uh, that's pretty much it for feedback this week, Charles. All right. And that'll do it for this episode of Transmissions. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Adios. Later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week.
I'm sure that's funny somewhere. <laughs> I know the Washington Wizards. <laughs> Jesus. Can we vow that with every Patreon dollar we get from now on, we will not benefit Jeremy Soundboard? <laughs> did, did Jeremy did Jeremy get uh, audience reactions for Christmas or something? I think so. <laughs> you have booze. I, you have fucking booze. <laughs> no, I don't. I have this, which Daryl loves. <laughs> I hate that. I really um, hate you. Right no, my, Please don't do that. My soundboard um, app. <laughs> was updated and it included those three <laughs> and then I, I you know kind of still have old favorites like <laughs> <clears throat> favorites huh I want one <laughs> he also got married so I figured here I thought he was just engaged. Well, maybe he got engaged I thought he was just engaged Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> That's terrible. You're not married just yet, Gabe, so there's still hope, man. There's still hope. <laughs> <laughs>